everyone! How's it going? It's Vasco from the Angular University. Do you struggle writing RxJS code? Do you find it hard to write code based on observables, to make it maintainable and readable? Do you go back to a method with six or seven operators chained together and you don't know anymore what it does? If so, be sure to watch this video until the end to see some tips and tricks on how to write maintainable RxJS code. Now, notice how I have been doing this. I have been using this intermediate explanatory variable, so this is a best practice that comes from the clean code book. It also applies when we are developing RxJS code. So if we try to do a chain of RxJS operators and it's starting to get larger than, let's say, three, maybe four, it's better to assign that observable to a variable that explains what we are trying to obtain. Otherwise, when you come back to the function in order to try to maintain it, it will be the sort of code, let's say that you have six or seven RxJS operators chained one after the other, it will be very hard to read what is going on. Now, explanatory variables are very helpful for building this query. It would have been hard to build it without them, but we should always be on the lookout to opportunities to extract queries that we might reuse in the future to separate functions. For example, what we're doing here is we are going to find the lesson keys based on a course URL. This might be a query that we might want to repeat later let's say, to test for the presence of a lesson ID in a course. This function here, we're going to refactor this part of our query into a function that we can reuse. And we're going to compose this using function composition. So let's do that. The input is the course URL, so find lesson keys per course URL. And the return type, it's important to define the return types of these API calls, uh, even though they are implicitly defined, if nothing else for documentation purposes. So this should return an observable of a string array. So it should contain all the keys. So let's refactor this. We are going to return this value. So we no longer have course here. So we are going to call this dot find course by URL and we are going to pass it in the course URL. So this returns an observable of course and the switch map here returns us a list of objects, not a list of strings. So let's add here an extra map step. And in this map function, we receive here uh, an array of objects. So lessons per course, we're going to use plural here in this abbreviation. We are going to take this array and we are going to map it. What we're going to do is we receive here a lesson per course object. We are going to map the each lesson per course object to its key. So this way, what we return here is a list of strings containing the lesson keys and not those Firebase specific objects. So let's use this function here. We need to use this dot and we are going to pass it in the course URL and we can remove this explanatory variable here. So we already have here an observable which contains a list of IDs. So the thing is, we this is no longer an object here. This is a lesson key. So let's take this and let's pass it in here. So we no longer need to call dollar key. One final refactoring that we can do is we really don't need this explanatory variable anymore. This was useful when we had several of them. Now we can simply return. So we are going to take the observable that has the list of lesson keys and we are going to apply map to it. So again, here we are assuming that this is already a lesson key and not a lesson key object. So if we now try this out, we can see that our refactoring work, that we are still retrieving the list of lessons for a given course. And we have now here a couple more functions that we might want to reuse in other situations.